today really is going to be mostly conversation discussions. Um, we're going to do some topical discussions and put you in some breakout rooms so that you can talk to each other. Uh, lots of programs, um, lots of programs are starting to kind of open up again or making those plans for reopening. If not in the next few weeks or for summer, uh, then definitely thinking about the fall and what what that might look like. So we're going to kind of focus on some things we've learned over the last few weeks and then have a conversation about what do you think your programs may look like, what are you looking forward to, all those kind of things. So um, you get to, to kind of guide the discussions. I'll give you some prompts that will hopefully get conversations started. But once you get into those breakout rooms, um, the conversations can go, you know, if you go, oh, yeah, that was great, Brad, thanks, but we're going to talk about something else. That's fine. These, these really, I mean, my hope is that these will be helpful conversations for you. Um, something for you to be able to, to, to learn from one another and take some things away. Um, so just a couple of things, just a little ground rules um, as we do these breakout rooms. Most of you have been in these before. Um, but one of the things is just being respectful of, of other people and where they are. I heard this the other day that um, somebody said we're all in the same boat, you know, with this whole COVID crisis and whatever. And somebody else said, no, we're all in the same storm, but our boats look different. And so, so we all are in the same storm. We're all going through this COVID, COVID crisis, but where we are and how we deal with things uh, personally and professionally, as far as our programs and what we're doing, all those boats may look different. So as we have these conversations in the breakout rooms, um, just respect where other people are. Some people will be ready to go. I can't wait to be in front of kids and have them all right there. Others are gonna be a little more cautious and I wanna know a little more about what's going on before we do this. So um, just honor and respect where other people might be in those um, conversations in the breakout rooms. And then the second thing is just to make sure that everybody gets a chance to speak um, that wants to. You are not obligated to say anything in the, in the breakout rooms, um, but the more of you that get in breakout rooms and just sit quietly, it's going to be a long time in that room. So the more you engage in conversations, ask questions of each other, um, share your own thoughts. So, but just make sure that you're respectful and give other people a chance uh, to contribute to the conversation once you get in there. All right. So, um, so we're just going to go ahead and jump into this. So some of you have been with us from the beginning. So the first, first um, sessions we did were, the first session we did was on March 25th. So the Mason staff, the, the After School Network staff, we were sent home on March 18th. That following Wednesday, we did, um, did a session. And then from then, we've done eight weeks. So like I said, this is number 17 of the virtual PD sessions that we've done. We have four more, so, or well, three, four more, including today. So today, topical discussions, just to kind of give you an idea. Uh, tomorrow, if you haven't registered for tomorrow, please make sure you do that. Jamie Cassip uh, from Google is gonna be with us. Jamie spoke at the National After School Association. He was a keynote speaker at the uh, NAA convention last year. Um, very good, I think he's gonna challenge maybe some of the way we think about things. Um, I don't think he's gonna talk about this, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and tell you what he said, but if he says it, act surprised. Um, but he talked, about, he talked about how we say so much about kids that they grow up with technology. All these kids are growing up with te technology. Of course they know how to use it. Of course they know what to do with it. He said, yes, they do grow up with technology, but kids are also growing up with automobiles and we still have to teach them how to drive. We have to teach them how to use that vehicle in a safe manner, in a proper manner, whatever. And he said, it's the same way with technology. Yes, it's all around them, but we, they need to be taught how to use it, um, the best way to use things. So um, I think Jamie's gonna be really good tomorrow. Uh, next Wednesday, we'll have a session with 220 Leadership, Matthew and Joseph Moivon. Um, they are out of Chicago. They do a lot of work with high school students, planning for the future dreaming about who they might be. So they're gonna come on, they're gonna talk with us just a little about planning and, and where we might go, give us some tools for planning for our futures as well. And then next Thursday will be Dr. Brian Sims. Uh, Dr. Sims is with the National Association of, Mental, of State Mental Health Program Directors. Um, and so he's gonna talk about trauma, gonna talk about what trauma does to our bodies, to our brains and some things that maybe we can look for in our students when we get back in front of them and just to be aware of. For that so so that's gonna happen next week and that's what's going on today and tomorrow so 
we're going to talk a little bit over the last eight weeks, we've covered a lot of ground, um, lots of different sessions, lots of things that we have learned. Um, so I'm going to do this. So these are the sessions that we have, have done over the last eight weeks. So the connect and learn sessions that we've done on Wednesdays <clears throat> started with self care. We did those two just back to back Wednesday, Thursday, they were the same session. Um, did a topical discussion session with me, Lena Lawson, who's one of our AREs with the network, uh, did a session on virtual mentoring and how do we do that. Clint Dar, who's also an ARE with us, did a session on service learning and how we can incorporate that into our programs. Uh, Scott Mann with Venture Lab came and he did a session on the, on the um, entrepreneurial mindset and how do we, how do we think like an entrepreneur. Erica Petrelli did Finding Inspiration. And how do we just, how do we take a moment and pause and find inspiration in the things around us? Eric Rolls, vivaciously virtual is what he called it. Uh, Eric's session was all about technology. And here's some things, some tools you can use with your, with your kids, with your staff. Uh, and then last week, Laura Evans compiled a team, put together a team of 4-H staff and talked about their experiential model of learning and computer, computer science. And we got, got an opportunity to learn six different um, activities that we can do with kids. That was just to connect and learn. Ask an expert, parent chick, talk to us about how to teach STEM and not STEM activities, but those I wonder questions. I wonder what would happen. Um, Tyler Kearns, our own Tyler uh, from Clayton Kid Zone, St. Louis, uh, talked about the genius of play and why play is important to kids. We had an SEL session with Kid Grit, and they, if you remember, if you were with us, they talked about their wheel of kind of checking in with yourself, kind of those self checks and using that with students. Um, Tina Meyer did a presentation on cyberbullying, told her story of her daughter, um, and kind of, you know, where, where that cyberbullying happens. Um, Viviana Hernandez St. Louis talked to us, She's for, she was with Kids Included Together, talked to us about behaviors communication and what our kids might be saying it, with their behaviors. Um, two weeks ago, Viviana was supposed to be with us again and she had emailed early that morning and said, I, I'm not gonna be able to make it. So Clint Dar and I put together a little mashup of some presentations we have done before. Um, creative thinking, we did the Apple the Apple activity where we had to think about things connected to apples. And then Clint talked about laughter and the importance of laughter and he made us laugh, which was great. And then last week, um, Renee Reed Miller talked about social emotional learning for staff as we go back to work and things we're gonna have to worry about and things that we're gonna have to not worry about, but things we're gonna have to pay attention to um, as we go back to work and go back to being in front of the kids. So, um, so those are, that's what we've done over the last eight weeks. And just so you know, we've done 16 sessions. We've had over 3,000 participants total. Um, that's, that's every session put together, the attendance in each one. Um, that boils down to 700 and about 725 unique individuals that have joined these trainings over the last few weeks. Um, had an average attendance of about 202 people on those trainings. Um, I was going to talk about this in a little bit, but it does feel like we have become connected. Um, you know, we're together twice a week on these trainings. It's nice. I, you know, lots of you I did not know, didn't know names, didn't know programs. Um, it's been nice to kind of put those together. I look forward to when we're all in the same place, um, you know, and so I can, I can go, hey, Ryan Willoughby, we never met, but we've met. So um, looking forward to that. So all that to say, Here's what we've done over the last eight weeks. I'm gonna put you in some breakout rooms here in a minute. And what I want you to, to discuss is what have you learned over the last eight weeks that you either have used already or you plan to use with your students or with your staff. Um, so what have you learned over the last eight weeks? Which, which presentation was most impactful for you and why? So which one of these sessions, and that's why I'm kind of leaving them up there, you can look through, um, which one of these sessions made an impact? And so you're just gonna talk about that in your, in your breakout room and how you hope to use some of that information uh, when you get back in front of your kids. In the chat box, 
if you would please um, just let us know what was the most impactful presentation that we've done. Um, so you kind of talked about those. I can put those back up if you want. Um, let me, sorry. Um, yeah, just what was the, what was the most impactful session for you and what will you, how will you use that in your program? But what was the most impactful? And so while you're doing that, I want to hear from uh, just a few rooms. So, so Valley, um, since you were really excited about it, tell us what room you were in and kind of what was the conversation? What'd y'all talk about? I, I, I think I was at 22. I was actually the one doing the talking and I was just kind of explaining of what we're doing at Better Family Life with all of our um, virtual um, things that we have. So we have like dancing with Mama Vivian, um, we have Arts with Guns, um, Parent Hump Day on Wednesday, YLA Team Mixer on Friday. So we just continue to try to make sure we're doing everything that we can for the kids and um, how can we continue to keep adapting. And so someone asked me, um, do we use Zoom a lot? And I said, well, we may use Zoom for, you know, our own things and our means every week, but being that Better Family Life have their own website, so we try to market it on there, on the website, on our own social media sites, anything that we can get out. And we don't target just one age group. We go from elementary to the parents. So mm -hmm. how can we incorporate everybody? Um, not just that we're, my boss, them are always on P's and Q's like, okay, hey, this is what we need to do today. Listen to this message or anything like that. So I really, I, all of the lessons are definitely going to be used. I don't have a favorite pick because they were all amazing. So I learned a yeah. lot from them. And so, yes, we're definitely going to use a lot, especially Good. the pyramid. <laughs> Good. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Valerie. Yeah. What about, um, is there somebody from room number five that would like to let us know? And I picked number five because that was my number in soccer. So that's, uh, that was the number I chose. So if there's somebody from group five that would like to just tell us what was the conversation in your room, you can unmute yourself. Got to be a five. I know there were people in five. Anybody? Anyone? Hey, Brad. I'm, I was in five. We're waiting for Naisha to talk. <laughs> or I am. Oh, yeah. Let's let Naisha bring it. <laughs> oh, um, okay. So, yeah, yeah. Representing you, group five. You have um, been voluntold. Uh huh. Um, we actually were talking about all of the workshops being good too. Um, the cyber bullying definitely came up. Um, um, just how we would come back and actually, uh, what are we, what are we incorporating now? What, what current programs do we have? How do we utilize? How will we utilize um, some of these learnings and weave them into our programs afterwards? Social emotional learnings were really good. Um, one of the ones that I said, of course, was the social emotional learning pieces um, to come back and be able to uh, receive our kids coming back. But um, really digging into um, um, the internet, the ones that were teaching about um, technology, because we all are experiencing this and this is new to so many staff members. So for you all to be able to offer those trainings to kind of help us navigate to as adults. So the focus immediately went to the kids, the kids, the kids, but the adults had to learn too um, on how to put it out. So I think it was um, very beneficial. Well, as a group, we, we talked about it being beneficial to even have you all walk us through how to, how to, um, piece and you all really took your time and put out some great information with all the training so it was really hard to uh, choose one particular one in particular. Mm, good good thanks Naisha. Hey, all Brad, right hey Brad real quick in the yeah. chat box someone wanted to know about the snake in the meter box because I guess we didn't do an update on that so, okay yeah so I just want to let you know snake fried itself and the utility company had to come out and turn off the uh, power to my house and get the and get that snake. And it wasn't the first snake this spring. There was also a skeleton of another snake that Evan Lee had gotten up there about a month ago. And the snake was almost five feet long and he found his way in there. And he, unfortunately, he uh, committed suicide. Hmm. I would have to move. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to move. Yes. Yeah. You can hear me. Either. I don't do snakes either. 
I know. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Yes. I, I was worried that didn't nobody hear me. <laughs> yeah, no, we can, we can hear you. We can Thank hear you. you. I've had three snakes in my yard this summer, so far. Mm. Yeah, it's Not that, time, pleasant. No. that time of year. That time of year. All right. Well, good. Well, I'm glad that conversation was good. Um, we're going to do two more breakout rooms. So this, this next little session that we're going to do, um, we'll give you about the same amount of time, maybe a couple minutes longer since people came back, so that's not long enough. Um, so lots of programs, and we're hearing just chatter of different programs, um, thinking about reopening soon, talking about summer programming, and what that's going to look like, kind of waiting on, on uh, school districts to decide what are we doing and then where the programs are going to follow that. Um, I think probably there's a good chance that we're going to be doing a mix of in-person and virtual. Um, like I said, for, for us at the network, uh, these virtual training sessions, these are new for us. We've not done this before. Um, we've done a few webinars, but we're going to probably, we're gonna, well, I know not probably, we are going to continue to do virtual professional development um, as we move forward. So that's, I think, is going to be a helpful thing for you to be able to just tap into these. You don't have to travel anywhere. Um, you can just sit down and, and join these calls. But with, with our programming, I think it is going to be a mix of virtual programming still, as well as the in-person. Um, and as you start thinking about this, there may be some cycles too where everything clears up, we open back up, and then maybe in the fall that they send us all back home again because there's another flare up. I, we just don't know. There's so much that's not known. And I think it's so easy to get caught up in, well, what are we going to do? And we're not going to be able to do this. And we're not going to be able to do this. We hear this a lot, you know, um, thinking about kids and how are you going to tell second graders? don't go hug your best friend that you haven't seen for two months, right? How are you going to tell them to not come and give you a high five or not give you a hug um, because they haven't seen you for two months? It's a, it's a hard thing. And I think it's easy to get caught up in the, oh man, this is not going to work. And what are we going to do? Um, but I want us to kind of think about how do you see your program and what you do? How do you see it being better moving forward? from what you've done over the last two months? What are some opportunities that you see now that maybe you didn't see before you started doing virtual programming or working from home, all those kind of things? So, um, so we're gonna go, I think you will be in the same rooms, same breakout rooms. So you'll be back with your same people. So um, that's your prompt this time. How do you see your program being better as you move forward? What are things, what are some opportunities that you see now that you didn't see before? So trying to focus on how are we gonna be better? Not just, oh my gosh, we're not gonna be able to do and kind of spiral and we circle the drain that way. We're looking for the positive. What's the, what's the positive? What are the opportunities that you're gonna be able to, to jump into when you get back to programming, all right? Any questions before we, before we leave? Same thing, turn on your cameras, unmute yourselves when you get in the rooms. And I'll give you, I'm gonna give you 12 minutes. I said 10 last time and I gave you 12. So I'm gonna give you 12 and you might get 14. I don't know, or you might get six. I don't know, so talk fast, y'all. I'm only in the half, on the after school program, not, uh, not the full day school. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I'm with the St. Louis Public Schools, and I'm, like I said, I'm the school secretary, and I work with the after school with all the kids, so I'm with them all day during the day, and then, of course, when I transition to after school, a lot of them know me from after school, you know, from during the day, so uh, I'm just basically just a program assistant, just work it out, and just, I miss all of them. So I just I just popped in just to kind of hear what's going on in some of the different breakout rooms. So what uh, what were some ways that you all think that you or you see a program being better moving forward? Did you come up with any? Um, well, we've talked about missing the kids <laughs> and yeah. being compassionate to those who maybe didn't have the best experience at home. Yes. 
Yeah, we know that sometimes school and after school is a safe place for those kids. Joanna, were you going to say something? Yeah, I was just trying to say that there definitely should be more social, emotional um, learning, mm. more trauma-informed intervention, um, especially because quarantine is a traumatizing time for basically all of us. So for the first two weeks, maybe it's better to make it like a transition, a transitional stage instead of just jumping into the curriculum. Like yeah. students are afraid to share their stories or in quarantine, like what troubles them, what was fun, what they miss about the quarantine, what they didn't like about the quarantine, just, you know, share and listen. So they don't feel they're alone in the struggle. Right. Yeah, good. Good. All right, well, I'm gonna jump out. Y'all can continue your conversation. Oh. Everybody's coming back in. I think we got everybody. Um, everyone is on mute. So this time in the uh, in the ch in the chat box, just type briefly. How is your program going to be better? In what ways do you see your program being better um, when you when you go back to what you're doing? Um, or we get we get to leave our houses and be in front of kids. So um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pick two rooms. Uh, one of them is based on another number that I wore, number 11, uh, in basketball. That was my number. So if I could get somebody from room 11 to um, unmute yourself, and I can, just so you know, I can see who's in the breakout rooms. So I can go down the list of room 11 and just pick somebody. Uh, okay, I'm here. <laughs> oh, I was like, happy oh. birthday, happy birthday, Mama Booey. Happy birthday, Mama Booey. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, my boy. Happy birthday. Oh my God. Those are my, those are my co-workers. They're great. Happy great. birthday. That's awesome. That's Thank awesome. you guys. All right. Happy the babies. So happy yeah. birthday, Michelle. Thank you. So room 11, um, we were talking about, you know, it's time to start thinking outside the box. You know, uh, it's a new norm. Uh, one of them that we realized, though, is technology. And mm -hmm. so all of us that are not good at technology, we're going to we're gonna have to jump in with both feet and learn mm -hmm. all the different um, things that's out there for us to help work with our students. Also, one of the things we... Uh, um, talked about earlier the first time around was the class about uh you know uh self-care uh, uh it's going to be really important that we tune into ourselves and uh make sure that we're okay because uh, our kids can feel that negative energy yeah and so we want to work on ourselves in order to work with our students and so we know that uh, it's going to be times where we have to start thinking out the box. We have a wonderful uh, organization, a wonderful group of people. You all already heard from Miss Valley. Mm -hmm. um, today is our um, hump day, and it's Wednesday. And so for parents out on Zoom, you can go to the Better Family Life uh, Youth uh, website, and we have a DJ, and all he does is play music, and we can chat with each other. That's for our parents. Uh, but we also have um, classes, our dance classes on Saturdays through Zoom. Uh, these are our children from uh, after school. Uh, we have um, the, our Kype vets, the little ones, then the Kype Junior, then the core Kype kids are the older ones. We have a YLA group, and uh, they still meet. They have a, a dinner meeting on Zoom. And so we're trying to keep our kids together and interact with them just to see where they are. We have a mentoring group where we broke our students up and we uh, use Zoom or our telephones and we call the homes. We ask them how they're doing, they need any help with homework. So yeah, we, we just sort of had to think outside the box. What do we need to do to reach our students? So we're already on that train. Good. And Good. Uh, so yeah, I can keep on going, but I won't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, happy birthday! Thank you for uh, thank, thank you. you for sharing what happened in your room. Um, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna ask for one more. If I could get somebody from room 17, anybody from room 17, that means y'all gotta 
remember your numbers too. So, yeah. anybody so in? I'm going to have either Sarah, either Sarah or Jennifer, somebody jump in. I think they had the two best connections. So either Sarah Harris or Jennifer Grimes. Okay, thanks, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's great having him in the group, by the way. Um, I think one thing that I brought up was um, going back. I'm appreciative of having all the um, networking possibilities, all the connections from basically all the trainings that we've had. So I can go back and look over all the trainings we've had and all the presenters and go to the websites. And I can also reach out to you all, Mark and brad or if i need help with anything so i'm grateful that i won't be an island basically yeah good good and that's something you know i mean that's one of those kind of um benefits that that was intended but it's kind of unspoken like one of the things that i think that has happened well over these is is those connections that you're talking about sarah um and i think i mentioned this early earlier just being able to see names know where people are a little bit at least have an idea um, as well as for us at the network to to get in front of frontline staff and people that we normally may not connect with. Um, we do visits with the program directors and we might meet some of the frontline staff, um, but this has been really good and I do think those connections uh, will serve us all well. Um, so if you know speaking for any of us with the, with the MASN staff, um, you can email whatever questions you can give us a call that includes the those of us that are in the office here in columbia as well as the ares um i know david tony's on here i see sandra pratt david clint dar um all of these different people that are here to serve you so please don't hesitate to to ask you know call us with your questions email us with your questions whatever so all right so thank you uh, michelle and sarah for sharing there so this will be our last last breakout um and asking for a little bit of vulnerability here so because we're because we're all family now we've been together for 16 sessions um so just asking for a little honesty so um as you think about going back being in front of kids um some of you i know have continued the program and um that's been fantastic but as you think about going back and doing in-person programming what one what are you most excited about what are you looking forward to the most and two what are you most nervous about because we have to acknowledge that there i mean i i went somewhere the other day and i was a little bit nervous because it's not something i had done for the last two months and there were other people around and so um so as you think about going back and being in front of your kids what are you most excited about um in your program and then the second one what are you most nervous about? And just be honest. I'm nervous about getting sick. I'm nervous about kids not showing up. I'm nervous about whatever it might be. Um, and we're not claiming to have answers. We're not going to go, oh, well, you don't, shouldn't be nervous because, like I said, we're all in the same storm, but we're all in different boats. So, um, so that's your prompt this time. One more time back to the breakout rooms. So, uh, yes. Um, quick question. So in our room, in our last room, we kind of talked about already what we were kind of scared of going back into and what was like our biggest fear. So what was the other two again? You said um, like stepping out into the public, right? Well, just just what are you most excited about and what are you most nervous about? I'm most excited about seeing the faces of mm -hmm. all of our kids. Mm -hmm. And just getting the excitement of them knowing they are out of their houses. Yeah. Yeah, because that's that's actually what I'm excited about and what I am, I guess, fearful of is knowing or wondering if they have stories to tell, mm -hmm. you know, since they've been at home. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the stories might be scary, though. Yeah, that's yeah. that's my fear. Yeah, because they're very they can be very open. Some of them, they because they trust a lot of the staff, mm -hmm. so they feel like they can actually, you know, they can they can sit down and have conversations with them. And it's sometimes it's about stuff that's going on at home, things that's going on with their parents. So that's kind of like one of my fears. And just me remembering to stay distant. 
<laughs> right. Yes. I'm a hugger. Yeah, I'm the same. I mean, I, I, that's, I'm, I don't mind being close. I know. And, you know, have always done that with my kids. I worked with middle school and high school and it was always a handshake. It was knuckles. Yeah. It was a high five. Yeah. Now. Yeah. So it will be yeah. different. I have to, I, know this. I have to purposely uh -huh. remember to stay back. Yes. Yeah. Because the first thing I want to do is walk up to you and hug you. Well, so. especially if you haven't, you know, because you haven't seen them for two months. And yes. You've missed them. Yeah. Yes. Margaret, what were you going to say? No, I'm just saying, you know, I agree with Audrey, but this Friday, Lakeway is going to start delivering sunflower seeds in packets with the dirt and egg cartons that they can just plant in the ground. And mm -hmm. then the following Friday, we're doing the trees from the conservation department. We're going to deliver them to the children. Oh, so we can have, good. hopefully we get some good contact because in our area, a lot of them don't have internet or any way for us to zoom with them or talk to them so this is good it's kind of scary but i'm really excited because i've been sending packets to my little ones because i do preschool and kindergarten or preschool and kindergarten and there's you know a lot of them will that have internet will post pictures that they got this stuff so right you know i've enjoyed that you yeah. know it's a lot of my time but you know like I told Stephanie, because I don't put down a lot of my hours, and she goes, and I said, I'm not doing it for the money. I'm doing it for my children because right. yes. most of the time I'm grandma to a lot of them mm -hmm. because they mm -hmm. don't, half of my class, does, they don't live with their parents. They right. live with someone else. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. It is. Yeah, and I agree with Audrey. You just never know what they're going to say. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so. it's exciting and scary at the same time. You know, mm -hmm. right, right. To see them and and scary to see them too. So I just hope we get to start school. Yeah, yeah, I hope so too. If you would please just put it in the chat box. What are you most excited about <clears throat> about your program reopening? Whatever that looks like. Uh, what What are you most excited about? We We had a little little conversation in uh, in the main session. There were a couple of people that stayed. Um, group ten. Uh, Audrey, I tried to get her back to your group. It's not that she disliked you and she just walked away. We just couldn't get her back in there. Um, but but we talked about one of the things that was most exciting was seeing the kids, which I have, you know, is popping up in the uh, in the chat box. It's also a scary thing of you know seeing seeing the kids and what what they've gone through over the last two months and or however many months it might be before we get back in front of them. Um, but it is it is uh, exciting to be able to see them. And it's amazing how much you can miss kids that are not your own kids. Um, but I, but I feel that. So, and I don't even work with kids anymore. I mean, I'm, I'm working mostly with adults, but I still, uh, when I think about not being able to see my kids for two months, um, that's a big deal. So, um, so yeah, so, so thank you guys. Um, if you, if you have questions, go ahead and put those over in the chat box and Mark and Clint, if you guys could kind of help me, um, pay attention to that. If there are any questions, um, we're, we're going to wrap up just so y'all can, um, get out of here on time. Um, so tomorrow, if you have not registered for tomorrow's session uh, with Jamie Cassett, three o'clock, uh, I think Jamie's going to be good. So um, he'll be about 10 minutes late um, to our session. So we'll, we'll kill 10 minutes. That's pretty easy for us to do. So um, we'll, we'll have a little fun at the beginning. And then I think um, Jamie's going to be really good. So uh, Mark or Clint, did you see any questions pop up? Uh, yeah, one question about the Recordings, recordings. Webinars. Yeah, you know, apparently MASN, the technology part of what we do is not quite as strong as maybe some of the other things that we do. Um, so we're still working on getting those edited and getting them up. One of the things that we have run into with the recordings, um, so like this one today, once you take out the debt space when you're all in your um, breakout rooms, because the breakout rooms are not recorded, and so the recording is mostly just me sitting here waiting for people to come back. And that's not very entertaining. So, um, so we're trying to kind of figure out what we can edit out and, and how to make it still be a worthwhile watch uh, for you. So, um, so yeah, so they will be up at some point. We will let you know where they are and how you can access those and all those kind of things. So, um, all right, anything, master list of resources. If you go to the MASN website, and maybe Clint or Mark, you can put the website in the chat box. 
Um, we have a, we've been collecting a list of resources um, outside of these training sessions. So there's a list of those resources as well as PowerPoints and any other resources from any of our Connect and Learn and Ask an Expert sessions. Those are all there as well. So you can, um, you can grab those PowerPoints there. If there's something that I think uh, somebody, maybe it was Sarah talking about connections, Naisha might have mentioned <clears throat> being able to, to get all those resources. MASN website, there it is, moafterschool.org. Um, Mark just put it in the chat box. You can go there and those, um, I think it says previous MASN trainings is the link there. And then all of, the, all of those Connect and Learns and Ask an Expert are there. So, all right, anything, anything else that we've missed over there, Clint or Mark? All right. We're good. All right. Of course, so excited about tomorrow. You guys don't want to miss Jamie. Yeah. Well, quality. Yep. Yep. It'll be good. So thank you all so much for your time today. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for engaging in the conversations and we will see you all tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day.